London, 1940. Those were the days when Hitler's bombers swarmed across the English Channel. They came to destroy British resistance before invading a country that had refused to surrender to the Nazi Blitz. But there was no invasion. A handful of fighter planes, vastly outnumbered but never surprised, was always ready for the attacker. As soon as the enemy set out, a strange device known as radar gave warning and the Spitfires took to the air, ready to meet the foe. It was the German who was taken by surprise. When the RAF, diving unexpectedly upon him, shot him out of the skies and littered the waters of the Channel and the shores of England with his broken, twisted wreckage. England was saved. As Winston Churchill said, never had so many owed so much to so few. That few included the handful of anonymous scientists who had developed radar. For in this war of strange and terrible new weapons, victory went to those nations whose science and industrial skills surpassed the enemies. The principle of radar had been known to electronic experts of all countries for years, that high frequency waves will bounce back from an obstacle in their path just like a rubber ball when it hits a wall. Radar catches these waves on the rebound from the plane and computes its speed, height, and direction of approach. It was the Allies whose radar devices were always a step ahead of the Axis. This was the case with anti-aircraft radar, used by our invading armies to keep its AA guns unerringly trained on the target, running up huge totals of enemy craft shot down. Then, radar took to the air itself. Mounted in bombers, it searched out enemy targets at great heights through the heaviest overcast, signaling the right moment for bombs away. Next, we put radar in fighters as well as bombers. Our planes were now able to track other aircraft in the dark. The unseen enemy was first located and challenged by the automatic radar signal. Unless he had a device known as a transponder, and it came back with the correct code answer that identified him as friendly, he was shot down. Allied transports as well as combat planes shared the benefit of still another radar adaptation. Carried in a mobile station that operated from the airfield, it beckoned the plane in to a safe landing in the dead of night or low ceiling weather. This was used not only on army airfields, but also on the floating air drones of the Navy's carriers to bring back planes from distant missions over the unmarked ocean. The Navy had other uses for radar, just as spectacular. Great battles took place without our fleet ever seeing the enemy. Radar spotted his ships and laid the guns which blasted him out of the water. Shore bombardment preceding invasion, it outlined terrain features and spotted enemy strong points for heavy guns to knock out before amphibious troops stormed ashore. Below the sea, too, the enemy was hunted out and destroyed by this invisible scout. As soon as a submarine periscope showed itself, our electronic patrol was on its trail, remorselessly pursuing the U-boat until our destroyers were in position to release their depth bomb. Radar was the triumphant answer to Nazi efforts to torpedo our convoys. This electronic miracle not only outwitted U-boats, but also led our ships safely through fog, darkness, and mines. 